jewel. Classic German turntable manufacturer are back with three turntables coming to the UK. The MTR15, the MTR75 and the MTR40 which I have with me today. Now you might be pleased to know that the brand who we have here are the actual original company Jewel, so it's a German company and not some huge Chinese mega corporation who bought the brand name out. Before I really delve into this, let me make a bit of a shout out to my brother, Ryan Little. He's an American producer who puts a lot of his music online for free to use in people's YouTube videos or whatever they want. I've used his music plenty of times and in fact, I'll be using it on this very video. Do check him out, check the links down below, watch a few of his videos, give him some likes, tell him how awesome his music is and stuff like that. Thanks. Shall we see what it can do? Straight up, it's clear that this turntable's heritage is steeped in one of the greats of the turntable world, the Technics SL1200, and bears an even closer similarity to the Audio-Technica AT LP120, which I reviewed in my top turntables of 2016 last year. Priced at an agreeable £229, and sometimes available for a little bit cheaper than that, closer to £200, places the MTR40 up against the likes of the Project Primary, the Denon DP200 and the Audio-Technica ATLP120. But what do we get for our money? First off, the Jewel is a quartz lock direct drive turntable. Engaging and disengaging, the turntable's drive is controlled with a light action tap over the left next to the illuminated power control. And this turntable will play both 45 and 33 RPM records. No surprises there. It allows for pitch control, which while being ubiquitous on turntables of this kind, is fairly uncommon in the rest of the market. Next to the pitch control is our Wii target light, ideal for when you're in the club. The platter is a reasonably chunky slice of aluminium with strobe markings and comes with a no frills felt mat. All good. The MTR40 comes equipped with a built-in switchable phono stage, which makes it ideal for plug and play capability with any kind of powered speakers. Or if you want to turn it off and use the preamp built into your amplifier, you can. I'm always rather happy to see this feature because a lot of the preamps built into turntables are a little bit poor and plugging into your amplifier's preamp can actually improve the sound quality quite noticeably. The phono cables are removable, which is great because not all budget devices have this feature. Sadly, the power cable is captive, but I suppose it does stop you losing it, doesn't it? Moving on to the exciting stuff, the MTR sports a stylish S-shaped aluminium tone arm. All the mod cons are on show with an adjustable counterbalance, anti-skate, which are typically missing on devices below this price point, and as an added bonus, a removable head shell, which makes changing the cartridge a breeze. I was a little bit worried at first when I noticed how unceremoniously the tone arm was propelled off its rest by the lifts, but I could rest easy actually. When I tried it out and dropped it down on a few records, it actually is damped reasonably well. It's fine, 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 fine. Fine, 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 fine. One thing I did come across was a slightly worrying degree of play in the tone arm. Whether that's actually in the tone arm's bearings or just in the housing, I'm not sure, it's hard to say. The cartridge supplied here is an Audio-Technica 8091, which is one of the most affordable options. It's a fine, if unremarkable cartridge. We'll discuss this more momentarily. So I've been listening to the Jewel MTR40 under two main circumstances. One of them is with my main hi-fi system we got behind me, so Yamaha AS500 amplifier uh, and Monter Audio Silver 8i speakers. And that might seem a little bit unfair because that's like £1,500 worth of hi-fi, so if any of my comments are a little bit overly scathing, it's kind of because this is quite a revealing system and it's, this turn of turntable probably isn't what you'd typically pair with this turntable. Right off the bat, you know, I was pleasantly surprised. It's not a refined sound, let's get that clear. We're not going to the ends of the world here in detail on nuance, nor should we expect to on what is a fairly shoestring budget turntable, but it does sound fun and entirely listenable. My system, like I just said, is slightly on the bright side, and I did notice a degree of edginess in the top end that could be a touch irritating at times, and in the most complex loading passages, the cartridge and turntable did just get lost, it couldn't keep up. The sound surge itself is also a little bit small and slightly claustrophobic, but up until now I've been listening to this turntable or describing this turntable using its built-in phono stage. Using my Yamaha's built-in preamplifier, that edginess seemed to dissipate and just roll off quite nicely and really, really seriously, the bass had so much more weight and punch to it. It was a 
hugely impressive change. The sound stage was where the biggest improvement was to be found though. Rather than the music sounding like it came from a small, slightly claustrophobic space in the centre, it sounded like it was using the full stereo image of my big floor standing speakers, which was great. It really needed that to sound good. Furthermore, there was a greater degree in clarity between the instruments, although this did reveal a slight sensation of discord between the instrumentation, which is to say the instruments didn't quite always sound like they were in it all together as a happy family. In any case, that lack of cohesion didn't destroy the enjoyment, but it was a note of deficiency, and it's certainly something that you notice with turntables of this kind of price range in general. Let's roll on to the second listening experience I've had with the Dual MTR40. Many long-time watchers of Audio Llama will know how much I think that powered speaker setups are perfect for beginners, both because they can sound really, really good and be generally considerably less expensive than amplifiers and speakers. To that end, Acoustic Energy very recently sent me a set of their Ego 3 powered speaker system. Uh, a full review will be coming soon, but it's a 2.1 Bluetooth system with a big old sub in the center to get all your bass and two piddly tiny little speakers for all your top end stuff. To say the least, it's a very different listening experience to what I normally have in my living room, but let me tell you, they are a very nice sounding set of speakers and they don't sound tinny or poor quality in any way. In this kind of setup, the Jewel shows itself off to be a really good value purchase. It manages to maintain a more cohesive blend of the music without turning into an amalgamous, unfettered wall of noise. And the sound felt large, if not exactly deep. It never felt like the experience was lacking or if parts of the music were being hidden away from me by some poor quality of the turntable. The only issue I really bumped into was that that high-end edginess that was apparent on my other system was still apparent in some cases here and could occasionally be annoying, although it wasn't so apparent uh, as with my main system. So how do I round this off? Well, at £230, I do feel that the Dual MTR40 comes perilously close to treading on the feet of some slightly more expensive turntables that come equipped with better cartridges, for instance, and may well sound noticeably better. But if you want all the features that a turntable like this can offer, and especially considering you can often find it closer to £200 than £230, it soon becomes an intriguing budget offering for your shortlist, and one that will offer a desirable improvement over most of the sub £200 offerings on the market. Thank you then for watching this Audio Llama review of the Jewel MTR 40 turntable. If you've enjoyed this, then do give me a like. If you're gonna buy one, then give me another like. I'm not sure if you can do that, but you certainly should. Give me subscribe to see more of this kind of video by clicking on the llama's face when it turns up. Please do follow me on all the kind of social media things and check my Patreon. If you want to check out a review of a GPO final bag, click right up here. If you want to click down here for the new Llama Show, a weekly hangout where I say stuff and you guys are involved, click down there. You've been an awesome, a lovely, a lovely audience. I'll see you next time.